This summer has been a whirlwind of emotion for Penguins fans. The summer first started off with the Penguins missing the playoffs for the first time in 16 years, followed shortly by Ron Hextall and his entire regime being fired. Things seemed really dark, and then Kyle Dubas came in and completely changed the Penguins around. Through free agency, he completely transformed the bottom six of the team, as well as bringing in other valuable members like Alex Nedeljkovic and Ryan Graves. After that, he went and brought in the big fish and brought in Eric Carlson. Even after making all those moves I just said about, he's still not done, he's been signing players to PTOs very recently. Currently, the Penguins currently have four players under PTO contracts, and the question is, which ones have a chance at making the full team? In this video, I really want to deep dive into each player, say what they can bring to the Penguins, and see what I think their chances are of making the final team. Before we get into it though, make sure you hit that like button, it really helps me out, and while you're down there, subscribe too. Now let's go ahead and get into our first player of the video. Now let's get into the first player on my list, and that's going to be Mark Pissick. Mark Pissick was drafted in 2010, 23rd overall by the Buffalo Sabres. NHL.com currently lists him as 6'1", 205 pounds. He missed all of last season due to an Achilles heel injury. But his last season that he played was the 2021-2022 season, where he played 68 games and put up 12 points. Over the course of his entire career, he's played 521 games and has put up 104 points and is a negative 18 overall. So far in his career, he's played for the Buffalo Sabres, Florida Panthers, Dallas Stars, and last season he was signed with the Detroit Red Wings even though he had his Achilles heel injury and never ended up playing a regular season game for them. This is a guy that will be a depth signing for the defense, but I do think he can beat out Chad Ruedel for that final sixth spot on defense. I forget where I read it, but apparently Kyle Dubas in the new regime isn't too enamored with Chad Ruedel even though he's a little god to Penguins fans. And of all the spots that need help on the Penguins, I think that third pairing defenseman is what needs the most help right now. POJ started off good last season, and as the season went on, he kind of showed that he was out of his depth a little bit in a full 82 regular season. Mark pesic has been around the league for a while now, and I think that this is one of the spots where he can really thrive. One thing that Pissick really thrives at is breaking the puck from his own zone into the offensive zone. That is one thing that the Penguins defense has struggled with for a couple of years now, and one of the main reasons why they brought in Eric Carlson, because he's one of the best in the business at it. Personally, I think that I can really see Mark Pissick being a Penguin this year. Contract for him isn't going to cost much considering he didn't play last season and is coming off an Achilles heel injury, which I can see causing some issues. Ankle injuries like that can often hinder a player's speed on the ice and can make them very slow, but hopefully with a long time resting the injury, he's back to 100% full health and he's able to take that step back into the NHL. He is 31, so he is getting a little bit up there in age, but he kind of fits with the rest of the Penguins, so I don't think that's that big of a deal. Guy was a first round pick after all, he has the talent, he's a right handed shot, and I really think that he'll be a good fit for the Penguins if they decide to sign him. Now let's go ahead and move into the second player on the list. The next player up that I want to talk about is Colin White. He's also the most recent PTO signing that the Penguins have had. Colin White was drafted 21st overall by the Ottawa Senators in 2015. Last season, he played 68 games for the Florida Panthers, put up 8 goals and 15 points. Over the course of his entire career, he's played 292 games and has put up 113 points, including in the 18-19 season where he played 71 games and put up 41 points and 14 goals. Since that season though, he's played 61 games, 45 games, 24 games, and 68 games. And since then, the highest amount of points he's ever had in a season is 23, coming in the 19-20 season. White grew up a fan of the Penguins as a kid, and also was a giant fan of Mario Lemieux. Personally, I want him to get the contract the most just because of how much of a Penguins fan he was growing up. I think he can provide some scoring depth, and that's something that the bottom six really needs. The Penguins' bottom six is going to be very strong defensively, which is something that they've lacked in recent memory, but the issue with that is that they're not going to be able to score much. Throwing in players like Colin White from time to time is going to help bring that total point total up for them. The only thing with him, though, is, is he's primarily a center. The Penguins already have Noel Chari as most likely their fourth line center, and I don't see Colin White beating him out. One thing with Colin White though is he's predominantly a center. He could slide over to wing to play on the fourth line, or maybe he could be used in the AHL, but I don't think that they're going to need any more center depth. He was a part of the Florida Panthers Cup run this past season, and in 21 playoff games he put up 2 assists. If he manages to get a contract, he will just be more depth, but having too much depth is never a problem. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next player. The next player that the Penguins have signed that I want to talk about is Austin Wagner. Wagner was drafted in the 2015 draft, 99 overall, by the Los Angeles Kings in the 4th round. Last season, he played 7 games and put up 1 goal and 1 assist for 2 points. 
Over the course of his career, he's played 178 NHL games and has put up 42 points and 23 goals. His most productive season in the league was his very first season in 1819, where he played 62 games for the Los Angeles Kings, put up 12 goals and 21 points. Since hitting that mark in the first season, though, he's only played 65 games, 44 games, and 7 games in a season. As well with those lower game totals, he's also only put up 11 points total as his highest production in a single season. Last season was his first season with the Blackhawks, and before that he played for the Los Angeles Kings for his entire career. I'm not the most familiar with his game, but I'm pretty sure that he plays a very physical style, and that's something that the Penguins will want. They went out and focused on this for the bottom six when they went out and got people like Nolachari that like to play this hard to play style against. The guy is only 26 and can provide youthful energy to the Penguins, which is something that they really need. If nothing else, he probably could be depth in the AHL, and I would like to see him with the Penguins. He's 6'1 and 195 pounds, so he's a little bit on the bigger end, and that's something that the Penguins could also use. Hopefully, if he does sign with the Penguins, he's able to get back to where he was in his rookie season and put up some solid numbers in the NHL. I don't know if he'll beat out some of the other people that are already in the Penguins lineup, but I do think he would be a good depth forward to have in the organization. Now let's get on to the fourth and final person on the PTO list. Currently, the last player that the Penguins have under a professional tryout is Libor Hajak. He was the 37th overall pick in 2016 by the Tampa Bay Lightning and then was traded to the Rangers in the JT Miller Ryan McDonough deal. He is currently listed as 6'2, 209 pounds, so he is a very big bodied left handed defenseman. Last season, he played 16 games, scored one goal, and was a plus two. Over his total career in the NHL, he's played 110 games, scored four goals, and has 12 total points. In terms of offense, his most productive season was in the 1920 season where he played 28 games and scored five points. In the seasons that followed that one, he played 44 games, 17 games, and then 16 games. But in three seasons, he only managed to rack up six points, so he's not known for scoring much as a defenseman. Personally, I feel like he could fit as a very good seventh defenseman for the Penguins and take the job away as someone like Mark Friedman. Currently, he's only 25 as well, and he's also a big body, so he's exactly what the Penguins are looking for with youth that also plays hard to play against style. I also wouldn't mind the Penguins trying to sign him and put him in the AHL where he can develop a little bit more because I think that would help his career. I think that he can make a decent impact with the Penguins, but he's going to have a tough fight in training camp to try and secure one of the last roster spots. The Penguins do have some defensive depth in people like Ty Smith, Chad Ruedel, Mark Friedman, Will Butcher, so he's going to have to fight people like that in order to get that last roster spot on the third pairing defenseman, or he can just be the extra NHL forward, and there's nothing wrong with that. The Penguins are going to have some interesting decisions to make here soon. They are already $80,000 over the cap, so cuts are going to have to come. More than likely, I think the Penguins are just going to end up shedding salary by sending people down to the AHL. I think players like Drew O'Connor and Alex Nylander are the most likely subjects to be sent down because they are going to have to fight really hard for their spots in the lineup. The one thing that really does give me hope as a Penguins fan now is that we have Kyle Dubas at the helm and he's not afraid to go out and make a move when something's not working. Sure they have all this depth, but if something really isn't working, he'll go out and get an NHL quality forward or defenseman, or goalie for that matter, and see what will be the best fit for the team. Unlike the previous regime where they kind of just sat on their hands and waited for the team to figure itself out, Kyle Dubas will do the opposite and actually go out and make moves to help and help this team try and compete for one last Stanley Cup. Formal training camp opens next week and there's already been some unofficial skates going on for the teams. Hopefully some of these guys on PTOs will be able to go into training camp, fight really hard, and will be able to get their contracts. Even if they aren't everyday stays in the NHL lineup, they will be very good depth for the team to have, and that's something that you always need when you're trying to make a run for the Stanley Cup. I can't wait for the season to start and see where this team goes this year, because I think it's going to be a blast. I still wish the Penguins were able to go out and sign Thomas Tatar to a PTO, but as he signed with the Colorado Avalanche today, that's no longer possible. You never know how the season's going to go and who's going to end up on the team by the end of the season, and I can't wait to find out. I can't wait for the first puck drop against the Blackhawks. It's going to be so much fun this year. If you made it this far into the video, go down and hit the like button. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe, because I'm trying to hit 300 subscribers, and you subscribing will really help me out. Thank you so much for watching.